Hi everybody, all my followers. Uh, welcome to another one of my videos. Uh, this video today is on a uh, oh, it's on a C4. I believe this is a 2006 with the petrol engine. The engine code is the KFU. Uh, I'm not sure which uh, engine size is. Uh, the car came to me uh, because because of the engine light management on and it comes up with an anti-pollution fault uh, I've um, uh, I've deleted the codes with loads and loads of codes in there uh, I, I've been told they've changed uh, camshaft sensors, crankshaft sensors uh, I think they even mentioned uh, O2 sensors as well uh, so not not really sure what they did, but um, but they changed loads of stuff. So there was loads of codes in there, um, and what I've done is I've uh, cleared the codes, and because they've changed all those sensors, uh, what I've done is I've uh, cleared the adaptives, which is basically reset reset all the the adaptives of the ECU, and I went for a drive. Uh, I've just got back home. Um, I think I haven't drove two miles um, until the light came on again. Um, and um, I've scanned the car on the spot, I've stopped and I've scanned the car and this is the code that I came up with okay and uh, and yeah so is a P sorry guys you have a sunny day today for a change um, so the, the, the code is a P0351 uh, as you can see, it happened at nearly 2,000 revs. I was doing 30, 39 kilometers per hour, uh, or 50 odd miles per hour. Uh, the the mixture was on a closed loop, and I think there's not a lot of more information here. Is all the info we have. Okay, so yeah, this this is the faults. Uh, this is the fault. Sorry, it's the only fault I came up with. So, is is telling me that I might have a um, a short. So I'm gonna look for. I'm gonna look for. I'm gonna inspect the 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 coil pack area, cables, wires. I don't know see if there's anything there that we can find okay guys uh, I think I got to uh, to a conclusion and um, before I go there and show you uh, I want to show you the diagrams and um, uh, it might not be I think will be enough like this okay so this is the coil pack and uh, as you could see on the fault, uh, it was saying uh, ignition control, short circuit to negative or to positive or even open circuit. So it was giving a little bit of everything, isn't it? Okay, so what I've done is um, I've done the measurements already, but I just came back here to show you um, uh, what I'm looking for. Um, I'm, I've, I've done all the measures before I got to this, before I got to that to the diagrams but well it doesn't really matter anyway so the first thing I've done guys was uh, establish where the coil pack is which is this one here okay this is the coil pack and uh, as you can see in there uh, one two three and four the pins I go straight into the engine module so that's gonna be the signal for the to fire the the cylinders so it's a straight line uh, that's in there uh, and what I've done basically was I've measured uh, continuity or uh, resistance between every one of these single pins okay between every single one uh, and I got everything open circuit uh, sorry open line or open circuit which is, is, is why you're supposed to have except believe me or not between 6 and 5 between pin 6 and 5 I'm getting about 0.5 ohms, which is pretty much a closed circuit. And when we come back here, 
So pin four and five, uh, sorry, six and five, is these two pins here on the top. So the one on the left is pin six, the one on the right is pin five, as you can see over there, six and five. And if we follow it back, where's the mouse? Oh, there it is. If you follow it back, number five, sorry, number six, it comes up there, goes that way, all the way down, and goes to 31. So it's basically ground. Not rocket science on that one. And then the other one, look what the other one is. You go through there, through there, through there, and goes to fuse. You can't see there, but you can see where it's zoomed. It's fuse 10, 30 amps. So it's the 12 volts. So, am I having a short between ground and positive? I think I am. So, as you can see from here as well, I hope it's not too far. That uh, voltage there is not going to feed just the coil pack, but it's also feeding injectors. It's feeding that when there is the variable uh, timing valve. And then comes all the way down to 021, 022. So the oxygen sensors, one and two. And it solely feeds, and obviously it feeds once again the actuator for the variable timing. And it feeds the injectors and feeds the coil pack. Now, the first thing I've done, guys, was disconnect, sorry, every single one of these. So if the short was somewhere here between positive and ground, obviously you would be short that circuit as well because they are uh, shared. So if any, if any of these uh, components here or circuits was short, and that obviously would give me this fault. So the first thing I've done guys was disconnect injectors, disconnect variable uh, timing actuator and disconnect 021 and 022 and the fault didn't go away it stays in there okay the only time the fault came out or went away is if I take this fuse out or if I unplug something uh, there's one of the plugs that if I take it out it actually um, sends the code away as well uh, but as you understand that plug is the plug that comes all the way back into here. So actually the plug is, is mentioned in there, which is plug A, uh, is plug A, pins three, oh sorry guys, I'll show you the wrong one. So it's plug A, pin three, pin 24, pin four and pin two. So if I unplug that plug, if I unplug that plug, yep, yeah, um, the, the fault goes away obviously, or if I remove that fuse. So, Unfortunately, that uh, that uh, fuse box is is the same as that uh, video I've done for the 307 the other day. Uh, it's completely filled with that sort of silicone. You can't really get nowhere to it. Uh, I think in this case, uh, the fault is going to be inside the PCB somewhere. Maybe one of these relays uh, at the back, at the top because the fuse. As you can see in there, there's a relay behind uh, that then feeds the, the the fuel pump in the tank. Um, so yeah, I even took that uh, fuse as well, fuse uh, 5, and does exactly the same. So I believe it's going to be that uh, fuse box that's uh, faulty. Uh, so I, I believe I'm going to have to get that replaced, but before we go there... Um, what I want to do is I want to show you exactly how I've traced this down. So we're going to go into the engine bay and I'm going to sh show you in there what I've done. Okay, so at the moment I'm measuring pin 5 and pin 6. And as you can see, I'm getting 2.6 ohms at the moment. But that sometimes drops to... 0 0.5 is a little bit uh, erratic, but it, it moves up and down. Uh, if I start to touch the looms, not the looms, yeah, the, the, the stuff appears. So 
I removed the DC already. Um, so you see, it's now 1.8. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna unplug all those sensors that I've told you about. So I'm gonna unplug this one here. Okay, so it's unplugged. Still the same, so it's not the heater. I thought it would be the heater on one of the O2s that was short. Okay, second one. Still have the 1.7. I'm gonna disconnect the timing actuator. <laughs> We're now down to zero ohms. And I'm going to unplug the actually fuse um, uh, injectors, which is this gray plug here at the back. And as you can see, still reading zeros. So it's a closed circuit. Uh, if I come here, let me get the pliers, where are they? Okay, the pliers are here. I haven't touched nothing, and look, just went up to 2.6. Um, uh, so yeah, so if I remove the fuse at the back, get an upper line up, we're going to put the fuse back on. Back to zero ohms. If I remove the fuel pump, fuel pump, we get an open line as well. There is. So yeah. So I think it's going to be a short uh, somewhere inside this. Okay guys, uh, the problem has been fixed and just a little bit more info about. Um, first of all I would like to apologize because uh, at some point in the video, uh, I think was when I started to show you the diagrams, I've misled you or I gave you some wrong information I would say. <clears throat> um, so um, I was saying that there was a short between positive and ground um, by measuring those two pins um, there there was two things in there that I was I was telling you wrong first uh, further on investigation I've actually realized that uh, the the low resistance uh, was all due to the uh, fuel pump but that's actually the resistance of the motor itself which is about 0.5 just a little bit around there um, that's the resistance the resistance of that motor so obviously because if you go back on the video you're gonna see on the circuits because they share the same uh, uh, power supply obviously obviously th that that's that's the measurement you, you're gonna read in there it's gonna be the the, the fuel pump as well and that's why when I removed the actually uh, fuse for the fuel pump the value also changed uh, so that that was my bad. Um, uh, I do apologize, but uh, yeah. And the other thing I was um, telling you wrong as well was because the fault was actually for cylinder one and four, and and obviously um, the the wires I, I was measuring was actually uh, positive and ground. Anyway, moving forward from there. Uh, you remember I was saying the problem would be inside a short inside this box well I think it was not a short inside this box I think what was happening is uh, if you go back and you check the fault the fault would say uh, short to ground short to positive or to voltage or open circuit so why I think that was happening was the relay that feeds go back on the circuit you can see that uh, the relay that uh, powers fuse 5 and fuse 10 if I'm not mistaken um, which feeds the coil pack and 
the and uh, the fuel pump I believe that relay uh, was on his way out and it's gonna be one of these relays inside here you can't really see I mean you can see it through these uh, grooves here through these uh, gaps here you can see the relays in there so one of these relay is now making proper contact and possibly with vibrations or stuff like that every now and then he opens the circuit um, and the reason why is because obviously when I first got the car and I've diagnosed the car uh, was not just that fault in there uh, the fault that was in there was that fault that I've showed you but then you had also uh, the same fault for cylinder 2 and 3 and you had loads of other faults um, at the start I thought the fault was because they've been messing about with the engine changing coil packs and this and the other so I just want to start from scratch clear the codes then I went for a drive within two miles if that the light came on the engine light came on straight away and the, the fault was then the fault that I've showed you right at the start of the video um, but obviously when you think backwards now uh, with the faults that were there before uh, I think that was that that was what was happening so what was happening is that that, that relay was failing and coincidence that time when it failed it was when cylinder one and two uh, sorry one and four when they were tried to fire and over and and the relay failed at that time for a split of a second and it triggered that fault if it would fail when cylinder two and three was tried to trigger to trigger the fault would come on two and three and two and three and then it was all other sort of faults in there but but yeah so what i've done basically guys uh long story short go on you uh bsm bsm or psw as well or psm whatever they call it i think on the side actually says bsm uh so i got a new one or sorry a scrapyard one uh just as information there's no coding no nothing uh, needed for this um at all um it's just it's a straight swap uh, the only thing is, guys, uh, this one, which is the original, uh, was not configured for air conditioning. As you can see, the car doesn't have air conditioning. The one that's in there now came programmed for air conditioning. So it's just triggering a fault for the, I think it's for the clutch, uh, for the pump clutch or something like that. Uh, Unfortunately, the only way to uh, uh, change that is by reprogram the module, which I'm not going to do. Uh, the fault, it doesn't make anything else really, it's just a fault that's in there, that's all. But yeah, so I went for a drive with the car, uh, I drove the car for a good, can't remember now, but probably a good 20-30 miles. Uh, stop and start the engine a few times, and um, it's, it's run perfectly. No misfires, no nothing, the car's been running just fine. Just absolutely fine. So, so yeah, I do apologize for that area, uh, for that little bit where I showed you diagrams, where probably I gave you some wrong information. I was actually to uh, edit and cut some parts, but I decided not to. Uh, the diagrams are there. Maybe if you need the diagrams for this car, you can just pause the video and you, you, you can follow, uh, even on the screen if you need. Um, and also guys I mean sometimes I do the I mean sometimes I I, I, I do a diagnose or I do a, a, th a line of thinking and I'll for you through I think hang on a minute I'm thinking this wrong and you know we all do that so guys so is uh, I've tried to leave the, the video as original as possible so I think that's it for today um, we got the car fixed that was the main thing and uh, and yeah I really hope there's some useful information on the video. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Any comments, questions, put them below. And like always guys, thank you for watching the video.